Hello, welcome back to our course on uh, scanning electron ion probe microscopy in material characterization. Uh, in last couple of lectures, few lectures, we have been discussing on the scanning probe microscopy and we began with scanning tunneling microscopy. Uh, we have discussed on how the tip is fabricated for scanning tunneling microscopy by electrochemical etching and then we have started discussing on uh, piezoelectric scanner, the basics of piezoelectricity. Uh, today we will continue with that and essentially how the piezoelectric tube works in STM. Uh, in the last class, so I have discussed on piezoelectric plate, but actually in the scanning tunneling microscope we use piezoelectric tube and how it works and what is the limitation of the piezoelectric element we will discuss in today's lecture. Uh, in the STM, we want the uh, tube or piezoelectric scanner to move in all three di direction x, y and z direction uh, with an accuracy uh, as small as 0.1 angstrom. And therefore, uh, this piezoelectric scanner should allow us to mob the tip uh, in every direction x, y, z direction as precisely as possible. Uh, the piezoelectric tube has an advantage of having high piezoelectric constant and having high resonant frequency. And this tube consists of uh, a piezoelectric ceramic that you see here piezoelectric ceramics and the metal plates. In metal plates are there outside and also inside. Inside we have a metal plate, this is red color is metal plate and we have metal plate four quadrants are there, four quadrants are there outer uh, in the outer side and in, in inner side we have again metal. So, this is what the uh, tube uh, made of particularly with a material called PJT or lead lead zirconia titanite. And the motion in the z direction or nothing but longitudinal direction can be achieved by applying the voltage between the inner and outer electrodes, metal electrodes because this piezoelectric uh, material is a ceramic material which is insulating in nature. Uh, therefore, we need to have a metal electrode to apply the voltage. The, in the longitudinal direction, we can change the z moment. Similarly, in the deflection in the x y direction or nothing but transverse direction, uh, we can mop the tubes in the x y direction. And here as you see the deflection in the x y direction can be induced by uh, putting opposite polarity of the voltage to the outside electrons. And in the one side uh, the tube is shrinking and in other side it is expanding. So, this is a bipolar operation of the tube where voltage of opposite polarity is given to the opposite electrodes. And this vertical displacement del L uh, can be uh, calculated uh, with a piezo constant as we know let uh, del z by del v is nothing but it is del, z and del l and del v which is equal to uh, T 3 1 l upon h, where l is the length of the tube and h is the thickness of the tube wall, h is the thickness of the tube wall. So, uh, on for the particle displacement we can calculate by using this equation. Similarly, uh, in the transverse direction uh, it can be also calculated uh, in the transverse direction, this is for longitudinal direction and for transverse or lateral moment for lateral displacement that is del x by del v is nothing but d 3 1 l square by uh, d m h. Here uh, d m is the mean diameter 
of the tube mean diameter of the tube and rest of the parameters are same. Here uh, as the uh, tube is bending we assume that there is a circular arc it follows a circular arc using that um, assumption one can calculate the uh, lateral, lateral moments of the tube using this equation. But in the calculation of the lateral moments of the tube, it has not taken into consideration of the stress formed in the metal electrodes. As the tube bend, there will not be a uniform stress with the metal electrode. So, if we consider the non-uniform stress on the metal uh, electrodes, considering the non-uniform stress in the metal electrode, one can calculate this lateral displacement del x by del v is equal to uh, 2 root 2 upon pi then it will be again d 3 1 then L square by d m h. So, using this equation one can find the moments of the piezoelectric scanner either in the vertical direction or in the lateral direction and how much potential therefore needed to move the piezoelectric scanner upward or in the sideways. And this, uh, this equation, this equation is for uh, the bipolar, bipolar operation where voltage one side a negative, uh, negative voltage another side positive voltage is applied. Uh, so, to this electrode left side electron, one side electron in the x side it is negative and other side is positive. Uh, typically, uh, typically if we consider for, for a commercial uh, um, piezoelectric tube with a trade name let us say uh, P, trade name of PJT 5A, then for that uh, the typical length follows length is around uh, 25 point for mm and mean diameter is around 5.84 mm and the wall thickness of the tube or h is around 0.51 mm so uh, using this th uh, this parameters uh, or using these factors uh, one can find the piezo coefficient it will produce a piezo coefficient coefficient in the x and y direction of around 725 angstrom one can do more per voltage per, per volt. Uh, similarly, for z direction for z direction it will be around 90 angstrom per volt it will be around 90 angstrom per volt. So, one can design the tube uh, using suitable length th wall thickness to see how much piezoelectric coefficient can be achieved per volt. This is what actually uh, used in our STM uh, as a uh, piezoelectric scanner for the moments of the tip in three orthogonal direction x, y, z. Uh, but actually on this uh, on this piezoelectric tube we have the tungsten or platinum tip is fixed uh, which interact with the specimen because in STM both our tip and this specimen has to be conducting. So, this piezoelectric tube will only make the moment of the tip upward downward 
or in the side way x y direction, but it, it is not going to measure the current or tunneling current that we, we are interested to measure using the scanning tunneling microscope. So, a tip is tungsten or platinum or platinum iridium tip is fixed uh, on the um, on this tubular tubular piezo scanner to measure the current. So, normally in uh, this tip is placed at a distant L tip above the center of the piezo tube. So, that it can provide an additional de deflection del x tip. As it provide additional deflection, we can find that additional deflection uh, del x tip is equal to L tip uh, sin alpha, we can write it sin alpha because it is in bending motion. So, alpha is the bend, bending angle here alpha is the bending angle and which is nothing but it is quite small therefore, we can write L tip alpha and which is nothing but is equal to L tip uh, 2 del L by d m and which is equal to which is equal to L tip uh, for root over 2 divided by pi uh, d 3 1 L del V d m h. So, I am not going on detail uh, derivation of this equation directly putting all these here how the del x tip is uh, calculated uh, uh, this is a additional deflection when we put on the piezoelectric scanner. So, but uh, then uh, this is the additional deflection if we total uh, deflection we see that means the deflection due to piezoelectric scanner and also the deflection due to the tip uh, by uh, that, that then we have to combine by combining the x deflection of the piezo tube, the total piezo constant for horizontal deflection. deflection will be will be del x total divided by del v is equal to del x due to piezoelectric uh, tube scanner plus del x tip this is additional deflection uh, then del v by putting these two equation we can get 2 root 2 upon pi uh, d 3 1 uh, L p j and divided by uh, d m h L p j plus 2 L t p. Here L p j is the length of the p j electric scanner and L t p is the distance um, above the center of the piezo tube after putting the tip. So, that is that uh, L tip. So, in this way one can find the total horizontal deflection that will be occurring in a uh, STM using a tubular piezoelectric scanner. This is what about the piezoelectric scanner which is used in our STM for moving the tip uh, in different direction on the specimen. Now, we will come to uh, dis uh, discuss on the limitation of piezoelectric actuators or piezoelectric scanner. There are uh, four ma uh, major uh, limitations, first is non-linearity, then hysteresis, grip and thermal drifts, we will go one by one. Non-linearity. Here non-linearity means that deformation or displacement of the piezoelectric 
uh, material or piezoelectric tube is not uniform uh, in a ra large range of potential. It is not that we can apply any potential, keep on applying a pl uh, uh, potential and it will keep on giving more and more displacement. There is a linear range, there is a range of the potential where it shows linear increase in the displacement. Afterward, it gets saturated. As you see here in this uh, um, plot, del z is increasing up to a potential here, up to a potential here, after that it is no more linear. So, in the STM, we can only use this range of potential where it shows the linear behavior. Uh, we cannot use a potential above. Therefore, there is a limitation to a piezoelectric scanner up to what length it will show the displacement. We cannot therefore, do the scanning of the sample in a micrometer scale because piezoelectric scanner will not allow us to show the displacement or mop to any length on the specimen. That is the one of the reason why uh, large area scanning is not possible by STM. This is about non-linearity. Then we have uh, another problem is hysteresis. So, hysteresis occurs when the displacement, when we increase the potential, then displacement dead z increases and when we decrease the potential, then it get contracted, it get extended and contracted. When they do not follow the same path, we say it is hysteresis and there are two main contribution that led to the strain or displacement in the piezoelectric ceramic and in, that is in presence of electric field or applying the potent, um, voltage. One is intrinsic effect intrinsic effect occurs due to displacement of ion inside the crystal like in the PZT we have titanium atom at which, is, which titanium atom which was displaced apart from the center in the vertical position that the examples I had given that is the intrinsic effect which is due to the displacement of the ions. And the second is extrinsic effect which is due to orientation of the ferroelectric domains. Most of the uh, piezoelectric materials also show ferroelectric characteristic. Uh, particularly the PZT which is used as a piezoelectric ceramic in the STM that also saw ferroelectric behavior. Ferroelectric is nothing but a permanent electric dipole, presence of permanent electric dipole in the in, even in the absence of the electric field or in the, even in the absence of outside voltage applied to it. So, as it has ferroelectric characteristic or behavior, it has a ferroelectric domains and they will reorient it when we apply the voltage or potential. And we will see here how those reorientations occurs. So, inside the ferroelectric uh, dom, uh, ferroelect inside the crystal ferroelectric uh, uh, inside a ceramic material which is fer uh, soft ferroelectric behavior, uh, there are uh, domains, uh, ferroelectric domains which have different orientation particularly for example, in this case PJT titanium ion in the crystal lattice can move in 6 different direction and therefore, uh, domains with 6 different orientation exist in the crystal lattice. So, now, if, uh, if the domains, uh, these domains have internal electric field, if the internal electric field of the domains align along or parallel to the applied electric field if the internal electric field of the domains is parallel to the applied electric field, then that will be in the lower energy states. If the inner field of those domains is anti parallel to the applied field, then they will be in the higher energy states. So, now uh, the, these uh, domains would like to stay in the lower energy states and therefore, they would like to reorient themselves to in parallel to the applied field. However, there is a barrier, they have to cross that energetic barrier to go from higher energy states to lower energy states. And, and during that, uh, and that when they cross one, uh, when, if, 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 when they want to cross that energetic barrier or in order to cross that energetic barrier, uh, they, those domains will experience uh, the domains will experience a certain requirements of the field. 
and in order to do that uh, what will happen that the history of these materials will play an important role like how these materials previously been applied with a voltage and therefore, how they will behave for the their reorientation of those in our electric field. For example, let us say here uh, at position 1 at position 1 here we have 6 domains all are orienting we all are orienting in the same direction of the applied field. Therefore, displacement is maximum here field is positive displacement is high and this is the saturation polarization all domains align in the applied field that low energy states with a maximum strain. And when we go from 1 to 2 when we go from 1 to 2 by decreasing the field or when field is reduced applied voltage is reduced to 0 then most of these domains again align with the outside uh, with the outer field, but there is one domain which is reoriented and this states is what the remnant polarization still exist that is having remnant strain. So, the remnant strain or remnant polarization is the polarization or strain at 0 applied voltage. And when we reverse the um, uh, potential, when we reverse the potential, when we go towards negative potential, what we again see there is again reorientation of those domains. When this happens, we come to a stage where there is almost uh, no net polarization, where 3 are downwards and 3 are upward, no, no net polarization. And then again further in uh, further increasing the voltage in the opposite direction that is a negative voltage we found we find that all are in the anti parallel and therefore the displacement so what we see they uh, and it, this uh, the when these uh, domains uh, go from low energy states to high energy states they have to overcome the energy barrier and that will that depends on the uh, history of the material system his, uh, history of the material system and how that materials undergo changes before we apply this particular um, voltage cycle and the, due to this due to this hysteresis due to this hysteresis the extension of the piezoelectric uh, piezoelectric uh, scanner or piezoelectric uh, element uh, do not uh, only depends on does not only depends on the um, applied field, but also the uh, but also the in, uh, history or the the speci uh, specific states of this domain structure. And now, when th they come from four, when we reverse the potential, the way we gone, when we decrease uh, again, we increase the potential from negative to positive. Those will not follow the same path it has come. They will follow they are following a opposite different path 4 to 5 then 6 then 1. So, this is this is due to this uh, this is called the uh, hysteresis behavior and what it is showing is a butterfly type of uh, curve it is showing a better butterfly type of crop curve and between 1 to 2 this is between 1 to 2 when the orientation changes and the change in uh, in this cases the displacement used is due to the intrinsic effect between 1 to 2 this is a unipolar operation that is in the only positive direction that is positive direction it is the unipolar operation where uh, the orientation changes from one to another and displacement changes here that is due to intrinsic effect between 1 to 2 in, uh, between 1 to 2 the strain is mainly induced by intrinsic effect and in the 3 net polarization of the domains is 0. So, in actual uh, scanning probe microscopy we, we would it should not be reached to 0 otherwise it will be complete depolarization and in the fourth maximum polarization. So, the working range of the unipolar um, operation is between 1 to 2 and for the bipolar operation that we have seen in uh, we have seen in our piezoelectric tube that is what used in STM and for bipolar operation we should not come and reach the 3, but before than that. 
So, uh, so operation has to be done up to a potential up to a potential below the 3 because at 3 there is a complete depolarization of the uh, system. So, this is uh, this hysteresis because they do not follow the same uh, path and so or, uh, or so a, a butterfly type of curve the um, STM tip uh, is not scan um, from left to right and right to left, left to right or left to right we do not scan in the uh, STM operation due to this hysteresis behavior and we will see and due to the hysteresis behavior also we cannot use very high potential and make the piezoelectric scanner to mop a larger distance. So, this is what you see a type of uh, piezoelectric curve. The two effects are observed in this voltage sweep. One is the displacement is different for increasing and decreasing voltage as we see as we increase the voltage the displacement let us say displacement is here up to displacement up to a certain point here and then when we are decreasing there is a dis another displacement. This is one thing we see and second thing is the hysteresis increases for larger voltage amplitude, amplitude. as we go to a uh, larger voltage range then this amplitude hysteresis is increasing this green curve. And due to the hysteresis piezo constant ratio of the displacement and voltage is not constant anymore this is due to and rather depends on the applied voltage and on the history of the system which voltage applied before. So, this is the important factor that gives the hysteresis to the system. The average piezo constant for the smallest and largest voltage sweep differ by here ever, this is the piezo con, uh, average piezo constant this green dash line and the another uh, pink color dash line and due to this if we go for larger voltage applications to the piezoelectric scanner then image distortion would occur would occur and in order to use the, um, uh, larger voltage we need for to scan the larger area and therefore we cannot scan larger area on, uh, of the specimen uh, using the STM. Then another limitation is the creep it is the delay in the response of piezoelectric scanner to sudden change of the electric field. Uh, as you have seen in our hysteresis, there is a reorientation of the domain as the re that the, those reorientation of domain needs time. So, therefore, that the, those are time dependent function because those are energetic phenomena they have to come cross the energetic barrier from one orientation to another orientation as they are time dependent. So, therefore, this is slow process. And when we change the voltage, or it will not suddenly jump to that displacement quickly. It takes time, and therefore, as you see here, when we are giving the voltage V, when we are giving the voltage V, our del Z is not exactly following the same path. Similarly, when we are increasing a, a voltage V here, you see how the displacement along the x direction, and this uh, also one of the limitation. In the absence of, in the absence of the creep, uh, we it would exactly go to the same and ex same position. The displacement will occur same position, and this is another region why, like for example, if we want to move the piezoelectric scanner towards the x direction, we apply the uh, positive potential, and that piezo uh, tip starts to moving uh, towards positive direction, and when we again starts bringing the uh, piezoelectric scanner, scanner in opposite direction in the negative scale still our tip will be moving towards right this happens and that is one of the uh, main region uh, in the STM we scan from one uh, from left side left to right left to right like that instead of going left to right right to left like this. Other uh, um, Another way is thermal effects, uh, thermal, uh, thermal drifts also occur, thermal drifts also cause some kind of distortion that should be reduced. So, what we have seen uh, in this lecture that uh, uh, in this uh, lecture and also previous lecture that deformation of the material upon applying the voltage is due to the piezoelectric effect.
that is what I told in the introduction in uh, while discussing of about the basics of the piezoelectric effect. And the piezo constant describes the sensitivity of the piezoelectric actuator in a unit angstrom per volt that uh, unit angstrom per volt that is either del x by del v or del z by del v. Similarly, the piezo constant is independent of the thickness of the plate when longitudinal piezo effect is introduced that we have discussed in our last lecture. And while for transport piezo effect, the piezo constant can be varied by tuning the dimension piezo, uh, it, is, it is like x by z this for transport effect proportional to. So, by increasing the x and decreasing the z, we can uh, increase the transport piezo effect, if, uh, transport piezo effect, uh, piezo effect, but there are also limitation if we increase the x and we decrease the z. Uh, a tubular piezo element is used as a scanner uh, in STM. The non-linearity, hysteresis, creep are the some issues uh, with piezoelectric actuator uh, due to which SPM is not suitable tool to examine larger area or nothing but the in micro, micrometer range. Another reason hysteresis keeps, hysteresis and creep are also the reason why SP, in SPM two successive line scan, two successive line scans are not scanned in the opposite direction. They are not scanned first scan from left to right and the second scan is from right to right, left to right, right to left is not done. But they always scan, TP scan from left to right and then again left to right. In this way we scan the specimen. the references. Thank you.